Uh, Mary Jo, can you call the roll, please? Andy Selhurst. Here. Kathy Pucci. Here. Mary Belbear. Here. Kevin Tansky. Here. Barb Politsky. Here. Ron Van Kirk. Here. Meg Ryan Shackey. Here. Would you please stand and join with the Pledge of Allegiance? Follow the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing in prayer by Chaplain of the uh, Army National Guard, Major David Dietz. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please pray with me. Dear Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for this day and for all the blessings that you allow us to have each day. Lord, as we think about Veterans Day, Lord, we thank you for those who have served this great nation and for our local communities. And Lord, I pray that you just, uh, your hand of protection and blessing be upon them and their families. Lord, please meet here tonight. Lord, just be with this council as they, uh, they delegate, Lord. I pray that you just uh, bless Mayor Gallagher and each member here. Help them to have a... Uh, discussion of civility, Lord, and uh, just uh, bless and give them the wisdom that they need to lead this city. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May we be seated. Thank you, Major, for being here this evening and for your service to our country. Appreciate that. The first item on the agenda this evening is the approval of minutes for um, the meeting dated October 28, 2019. Are there any comments or questions regarding those? Move to approve. Thank you. To approve, Andy Selhurst. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Mary Belbeer. Abstain. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Barb Politsky. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey. Yes. Thank you. At this time, we'll have the public session. If anyone in the audience has any say for the good and well for the city of Brooklyn, please step forward to state your name and address, and you'll be recognized. Please remember to keep your comments to five minutes or fewer. Good evening, John Wagner, 4825 Benwood Drive, Brooklyn, Ohio. First of all, thank you for all getting reelected. I'm glad to see all these smiling faces. I'm glad I don't have to learn anybody new, so that's great, so thank you. Um, again, still pushing for the census. We look like we're getting a little bit of a boost in the, uh, the hourly rate. We will be talking about that shortly. I got news earlier in the week that it had gone up, and then I got an email today saying, please don't release the number until we give you the okay. But we are paying at least $18.50 an hour, and shortly to go up, I believe, even higher than that. We're doing well here in Brooklyn, but we could always use more. So thank you for very, very much for your support. And if you can do anything to help me get some more applicants, I really would appreciate it. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Okay. At this time, we'll move on with reports of committees, commissions, and boards. We'll begin this evening with the Finance Committee. Uh, we did meet prior to tonight's council meeting, as we always do at 6.30 in the conference room. We discussed the following. Ordinance 2019-40 is up for a third reading and adoption. This is authorizing a community cost share agreement with the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District for the property at 10716 Bidoff Road. We've talked about this several times now, uh, but just to uh, kind of give over, go over the details again, uh, the city of Brooklyn will front the $172,000 out of our portion of the stormwater fees with the sewer district. The district will then reimburse the city $147,000 of those fees either late this year or next year, meaning our portion for this purchase will be $25,000 again that comes out of our stormwater fees. It does not come out of our general fund. After the property is acquired by the sewer district, they will perform a water resource project. And again, the idea behind this is to help the 100-year floodplain. Once the water resource project is complete, the city will then retain, uh, will, will, will obtain the property once again, it will be left as is. The city will also build on the contract a way for residents that currently use the back portion of this property to access their own property um, from the steep slope that's behind their houses. The right of way will not interfere in any way with the water resource project and will have no impact uh, with the sewer district. And the uh, finance committee unanimously recommended council adopt. Ordinance 2019-41. This authorizes the mayor to enter an agreement with Quest Property Holdings for the purchase of certain real property known as 11050 Memphis Avenue. 
Again, this is the property that is uh, just before the bridge going into Lindale on Memphis Avenue. Uh, the purchase price of the property will be $30,000. Uh, the individual that we're buying this property from actually just paid $50,000 not all that long ago for it. And so we, we're, we are acquiring it for $30,000. There was an appraisal done a year or so ago and it appraised for $48,000. And so uh, the city is getting, um, at least according to the uh, appraisal, a good deal on this property. Once the city acquires it, it will then be uh, torn down and will be turned into green space as of right now. The house is basically useless. There's no water or sewer connection there. It would cost a lot of money to, to connect that. So it's been a blight in the city for a while. So I'm glad that uh, the finance committee recommended to um, pass this as well. And then uh, ordinance 2019-43, this is amending and updating the capital asset policy of the city of Brooklyn. As I mentioned before, during the last audit, uh, there were some uh, policies, capital asset policies, that, that were not in line with what our actual policy manual stated. And so this uh, puts our policy manual up to date with what, what's actually taking place in the city. And then the last item was Ordinance 2019-45. Uh, this is authorizing the capital improvement plan for 2020. And uh, this plan resulted from uh, Council's uh, budget work sessions. And the plan for 2020 totals $4,033,052, uh, well over half of that, uh, just under $2.7 million of that is for street improvements. And then also um, the other items on it are uh, $436,000 for police items like vehicles, uh, body dash cameras, uh, of course the um, Valley Dispatch, the capital R portion of that, uh, $10,000 from the fire department, um, $184,000 for the fire building, $298,000 for the rec center, $342,000 for new vehicles for the service department, uh, $66,000 in upgrades and repairs at the service garage, $52,000 in information technology, primarily dealing with the police department servers, uh, as well as security cameras for here at City Hall. And then, uh, as, I just, as I mentioned a second ago, uh, $2,645,000 uh, for the streets program. And then we were notified uh, by the administration that we did receive a $500 donation uh, from excuse me, Triad Engineering and Contracting, $400 to help with the Brooklyn uh, Thanksgiving food program. So thank you to Triad uh, for that generous donation. Uh, the, the council, or excuse me, the finance committee meeting does take place at 6.30 prior to our council meetings in the uh, conference room. All are welcome to attend. I will now move on with the recreation board, Councilman Tansky. Thank you. Please join us for our official anniversary special throwback jazzercise Legacy class at the Rec Center on Sunday, November 17th, from 1 p.m. till 2 p.m. Class is open to everyone and is free. Youth baseball registration for grades 1 to 2 is extended through November 30th. Rec Center will be closed on November, Thursday, November 28th, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day, and Friday, November 29th. Next Recreation Board meeting will be held on Wednesday, November 20th, Rec Center meeting room, 7 p.m. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tansky. Next up is the Domestic Abuse Commission, Councilman Ryan Shockley. Thank you. The next Domestic Abuse Commission meeting is tomorrow, Wednesday, November 13th at 6 p.m. We will meet at the Westbrook Apartments Community Room. We will be discussing a series of bills that were introduced at the state level regarding domestic abuse last month in honor of Domestic Abuse Awareness Month. That was in October, and that ends my report. Thank you. Uh, following our last council meeting, the public safety and environmental meeting, we met uh, to discuss two issues. One was a commercial vehicle parking issue as well as some traffic issues on Delora. Uh, this evening you'll see on the agenda ordinance 2019-44. Uh, this is a result of that meeting. Uh, this ordinance um, is just a working ordinance. It will be discussed further in another safety meeting following our next council meeting and uh, we plan to address it then and then it will, it will be placed on third reading in December. Next up is our um, Planning Commission, that's me as well. Our Planning Commission met on Thursday, November 7th to hear the following. A request from Adam Signs for a digital price, gas price sign on fuel station canopy at 10250 Brook Park Road. That's Sam's Club. They're putting a gas, uh, a gas price sign up on the side of there where the gas pumps are. And it's about time. That's what we told them in the commission meeting because it's hard to read that, that, sandwich, that sandwich board sign. That was approved. Then we have a request from Agile Signs for a sign package for Fairfield Inn at 5110 Tiedemann Road. This is the, the hotel that's going up behind Cracker Barrel, and it's going to look really nice. We saw the final design at the Planning Commission meeting. It's going to look sharp when it's done. That was approved as well. A request from Kim Lee Horn Associates Incorporated for a conditional use for a drive-through in a light industrial district at 10330 Cascade Crossing. 
And along with that, a request from Kimley Horton Associates for preliminary site plan approval for a Starbucks drive through at 10330 Cascade Crossing. These are both approved. And this is the old uh, Steak and Shake location. And so um, they're going to put it, use the same building. They're going to do some updates on it. And that's going to be a Starbucks uh, opening sometime uh, in the first half of next year. And then the last two items that were discussed was a request from uh, John Rakakis for a conditional use for a recreational facility in a multifamily plan development district at 8707 Memphis Avenue, as well as a preliminary site plan approval for a recreation facility at that same address. This is where the current batting cages is there on Memphis um, Avenue, and uh, both of these were denied by the Planning Commission. I will now move on with our school board liaison, Councilman Ryan Chucky. Thank you. The next school board meeting will be on Tuesday, November 19th at 6 p.m. in the Media Center. And also the um, school levy renewal that was on the ballot last week passed. And that ends my report. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, as the Board of Zoning Commit Appeals, Commissioner Colsar is not here this evening. Uh, but that report is the meeting for November the 21st has been canceled due to no applications. At this time, we'll now have the reports of council. We'll begin this evening with Mr. Selberts. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you to all the voters who came out and voted last week. Uh, numbers still could be better, but thank you for all that took the effort to vote either in person or by mail. Uh, the people that supported the schools, as you heard, thank you once again. Important vote. Congratulations to the elected school board members. Uh, for City Council, congratu congratulations on Meg and Ron getting re-elected. And congratulations to Sue Grodick, who's in the audience, on becoming a new council member. Look forward to working with you. And also congratulations to Katie on her re-election as mayor. Coming up, Chipotle. Uh, there's going to be a Chipotle night for post-prom committee. Uh, take a break and relax before the relatives arrive for Thanksgiving. Chipotle will donate 33% of all sales to the BHS Brooklyn High School post-prom event. It's going to be Saturday, November 23rd from 5 to 9 p.m. There's going to be one final fresh fr uh, fruit and produce distribution. It's going to be on two weeks from today, November 26th. It'll be from 4 to 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. is an earlier close time due to the uh, time change and the sun going down. Uh, one really nice good note, Brooklyn senior Jaden Walls was named 2019 Ohio Varsity Vo Volleyball Player of the Year during the Ohio Varsity Senior Slam and Underclassmen Showcase at Ursuline College on this past Sunday. Walls, who played for the Navy All-Stars, recorded an event high 14 kills and also tied for the most digs during, this, during the two All-Star matches with 16 and added six assists and a service ace. In the middle of last month, I had a chance to go along with Andy Udris, our Economic Development Director, and we went out to Lake County to visit a 1950s bungalow that the Lake County Port Authority uh, obtained. And what they did was actually go to this home and try to make it as a model home for what people could do uh, conceptually with having bungalows from the 50s and 60s roughly the same time when a number of homes in our area were built. And for people that bought them as starter homes, but maybe are starting to outgrow them, how they could change the floor plans or do in additions. Uh, it was an interesting visit when we talked to the director out there. It opened in mid-June, it would closed up in mid-October. They had roughly a little bit over 2,000 visitors come through and try to get ideas. People would come out themselves, first time they come out with a builder, the second time, just to get ideas. On the weekend before, when it was just about closing up, they still had 100 visitors that have one Sunday. So it's an interesting concept, and we might try to look into it. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Next up is Mrs. Pucci. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Major Dietz, for being uh, here with us this evening, and also thank you for your service. We appreciate it. Um, thank you also to Triad Engineering for their very generous donation of $500, which will uh, go to our Thanksgiving Food Basket Program. And thank you, Mr. Wagner, for your efforts um, in the census. Um, I hope all veterans were able to enjoy their day yesterday. Um, it's really nice that every year it seems like more and more businesses are um, doing, uh, making more of an effort to recognize our veterans, and I think that's a really good thing. 
congratulations to all the winners of the recent election and also thanks to all the candidates who ran. It's not an easy endeavor when you put yourself out there. Um, I'd also like to thank the voters for passing the very important school renewal levy and especially thank the residents who volunteered to work on this effort. I attended the Planning Commission last week and spoke in opposition of the application for conditional use for the up to bat property on Memphis. And while I'm not opposed to the concept that was pro um, proposed, I am against it at that location. The potential buyer of this property was suggesting uh, some improvements to the existing structure, but he also wanted to add a domed building for various indoor sports. And I believe this additional structure would have been a, uh, had a detrimental effect on the residents in that area and also, in my opinion, have a negative impact on the residential property values in the area. So I was very pleased that after a discussion, the Planning Commission did reject this application. I also attended the Safety Committee meeting that was held after our most recent Council meeting. And I support uh, trying to find a solution for those residents who have to bring commercial vehicles home or, in some cases, residents who own their own business, so they have to um, park the commercial vehicles at their homes. Um, I'm glad that there is going to be another meeting for further discussion because I think um, I, there's still some concerns about eliminating some of the other criteria and I did hear from a couple residents who also had concerns about um, basically protecting the residential neighborhood um, environment. So. Um, I think that completes my, oh, one more thing. Um, Mr. Salchertz, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to go out to look at um, what they did in Lake County. Um, as my colleagues would know, I brought this up when we had our focus group for the master plan. And I think it's very important that we try and get um, some sort of demonstration project here in Brooklyn, um, not only for the bungalows, but also um, some of the smaller colonials. There are options that I just think, you know, it's one thing to talk about it and it's also um, have diagrams, but if you can actually see a home that went through this transformation, I think it makes a big difference and it might um, uh, inspire some of our residents to take on something like this. And that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Bovier. Thank you. I'd like to thank you also. Um, Mr. Dates for uh, the beautiful prayer that you did say. And I'd also like to congratulate all those that won in this past election. Um, this past week, the Catholic Diocese lost a stalwart vicar of the church, and that was Bishop John Lennon. He was Bishop of Cleveland for 10 years. He came from Boston, and he had the duties of consolidating many of the Catholic churches, uh, a job that he did not want to do, and he was very unpopular for doing it. And um, many of the parishes were in decline, uh, and many of the churches had to be closed, and uh, 50 of the parishes were closed, but 10 of them, or 11 of them, were reopened after, after many parishes fought back and wanted to be reopened. Um, but I do believe he was a humble servant of God, and I'm, I'm very glad that I had the great opportunity to meet him and I, and I, I know he, um, he loved Cleveland, and I, I do believe there were a lot of people that did support him, and I do um, hope he is resting in peace. I'd also like to um, recognize all the veterans that are out there. It is amazing, as Kathy had said, how many people do recognize the uh, veterans that are out there. Nowadays, when you go to church, many of the um, uh, pastors and, and preachers do ask during the services for veterans to stand up and to be recognized and I do think that's beautiful. Even in restaurants they do give you discounts and even in stores and I think that's absolutely beautiful and we should always recognize our veterans because if it wasn't for them we wouldn't be here. And um, I do thank them and from the bottom of my heart my husband is a veteran, my father was a veteran and um, and it's always nice to say you know welcome home and thank you for your service I do remember one time someone said to my husband oh people don't like to be be told thank you for your service I don't believe that I think the veterans do like to be be thanked and, and told thank you for your service and that pretty much completes my report thank you Mr. good evening I'd like to congratulate Katie Gallagher 
who was elected to her second term in office as mayor of Brooklyn. I would also like to congratulate City Council President Ron Van Kirk on winning his third term in office, along with Meg Ryan Shockey and Sue Grodick on winning their first full council terms. I want to say that I will miss Council Member Barb Politsky, who did a wonderful job for the City of Brooklyn, both as a respected leader and as a resident of our community. I want to congratulate Mary Lee Bone and Rob Slattery on their success on being elected to the school board. I look forward to working with all of them and moving Brooklyn forward in a positive way. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Plutsky. Thank you, Mr. Van Kirk. I hate being redundant, but I have to say what I wrote. Congratulations to all the candidates who won the election, Mayor Gallagher, all city council members, and school board members. I hope that you all enjoy your time in office as much as I have enjoyed mine. It has been a rewarding experience. But the real winners in this were the children when we passed that school levy because you saw what happened in Willoughby. Those kids are really having a problem. No sports, no anything. And thank goodness that's not going to happen here. Yesterday, we remembered the brave men and women who served our country. We can never repay those who gave either their life or their time to protect our freedom. Our Veterans Memorial Park is a tribute to all who served. I would never support its being disturbed in any way. The large marble memorial between the blue and gold stars is a tribute to Lottie Holub, World War I veteran and commander of the American Legion for many, many years. Mr. Holub just happened to be my husband's uncle and my daughter's godfather. I had forgotten about that for many years, but as I worked with Laurel Garden Club a few years ago to place and dedicate the Blue and Gold Star Memorials, I remembered that Lottie's tribute was there. I can't help but wonder if that was really a coincidence. To all the veterans watching today, thank you for your service. That ends my report. Thank you. Next up is Mrs. Ranchuk. Thank you. Happy belated Veterans Day to all those who have served or are serving in our military. We are so blessed to live in a free country, and it is you that we owe all the credit to. From the, the bottom of my heart, thank you. And thank you also to all the residents that voted in last week's election. Voting is a right that we are given because we live in a free country. And I want to thank everyone who practiced the right to vote last week. And that ends my report. Thank you. Uh, just, a, just a couple of things, too. Thank you, Mrs. Plitsky, for that reminder. And I want to thank the veterans as well. It's not being redundant. I think it's important that we do that. Thank you, Mr. Dietz, uh, for being here this evening as well. He's a friend of mine. He attends our church. His son, uh, kids go to our school. He's a fine man, so I appreciate you being here, and thank you for your service. Um, I have a lot of family members that have served as veterans as well in the military. Several have passed on from this life, uh, but doesn't uh, diminish their um, contribution. Um, I tell my government class all the time, our generation has so much to be thankful for in their generation because they really haven't had to fight for anything. Um, it's pretty much been given to them. And it's been given to them by those that are unfortunately passing away at, a, at an alarming rate today because they're getting older. And so uh, we are very grateful for that. Uh, we live in a very unthankful time. And so uh, I am very thankful to live in America, very thankful for the veterans. Um, as far as the election goes, I, I do want to congratulate all the candidates um, who won election. I want to thank the residents for um, giving me your support for a third time. I'm humbled by that. Every time I see those vote counts come up and now for the third time that I've won, um, I, I, it is humbling. And so I thank you for that. I do want to um, welcome Sue Grodick here in a couple few weeks to our council. She'll be a valued asset here. Does a great job at the school from what I've heard, and so I'm looking forward to having you working with us. And you heard from Mrs. Pilecki, um I mentioned in the, in, on Cleveland.com that she is an example of grace and kind-heartedness, and I mean that. She is a, a very dear woman. She's done a wonderful job um, here on council. You will, you will be missed very much. And so I know you'll still be around, but you'll, you'll be missed very much on council. And, um, and again, Mayor, congratulations to you as well. I do want to thank the voters as well for joining me in supporting the schools and the school levy. It passed overwhelmingly, which I am glad to see. And uh, so I'm glad that we are not like some of those other cities that weren't able to pass theirs. At this time now, I'll turn it over to the mayor. Thank you, Council President Van Kirk. Uh, I also would like to thank Triad Engineering. They donate every year to our Thanksgiving basket along with St. Thomas More, the children. They will collect tons of food so we can put together baskets for those in need. This is a tradition the city's been doing for decades. 
So thank you for that donation, Triad, and the work of St. Thomas More and all the employees here that uh, choose to donate as well. I also want to thank Walmart. They sponsored the breakfast. Um, our firefighters were able to serve 60 veterans and their families on Sunday. I think it's just a, such a small token we can do to recognize and honor the veterans here in our community and their families for the sacrifices that they have given. And uh, a cute story, the chief was telling us in staff meeting this morning that two of the veterans had the days wrong, so they came in yesterday as opposed to Sunday. But what did our firefighters do? They started to cook them breakfast because of the small things that, uh, that matter. So thanks to the firefighters that stopped everything uh, to recognize and honor the veterans even though they came in the wrong day. So. Um, also, I want to thank everybody who volunteered for the Baba's Yard. I know Andy uh, Seller mentioned this is going to be the final day for um, this season. Uh, they, in order for us to continue uh, with this partnership with Baba's Yard, they're going to need volunteers. I know Andy, Meg, and Barb have volunteered regularly helping with the food, food distribution, but these are all volunteers that help with this program. This is all food that's given from the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. So we would like to continue this because we it is filling a void in our community and the surrounding area. So if you can volunteer your time, uh, we would appreciate that. If you could reach out to City Hall, to my secretary, Jill Ludwig, and let her know that maybe you can volunteer next year so we can have a list ready for them. That's uh, Jill Ludwig, it's J-L-U-D-W-I-G at brooklynohio.gov or 216-635-4220. And then one last thing, I'd like to thank everyone um, for coming out to vote. I'm honored to be reelected as the mayor of this great city. Uh, it's been a great four years. I look forward to another four great years. Congratulations to Meg and Ron um, on your re-election. Well, Meg, I guess this, <laughs> this would be a continuation, sorry. And then uh, Sue Grodick, I welcome you. Come January, I get to work with Sue every month on planning commission. I know she'll be a great addition to the city council. And Barb, I'm going to miss you on city council. Um, I think Ron did a great job summarizing as well as Kevin about the work you've done as just a resident and on city council. She's really had a lot of focus for the seniors in our community. Just, you know, it could be the smallest of projects or volunteering her time to help with the Medicare and, and walking seniors through that complicated process. Uh, so thank you, Barb. I know you have a few years on me, but I always say this, Barb, she's got way more energy than I do. <laughs> she can run circles around me. So um, thank you for everything you do. And um, I hope, hopefully we'll continue to see you through Laurel Garden Club and everything else you do for the community. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for the director's reports this evening, we have just one. That's our finance director, Mr. Rubies. Good evening, City Council. Just two um, items for tonight. Uh, first is an update on the RITA non-filet program. So you may remember back in September, uh, RITA sent out about 2,900 letters to potential non-filers of um, income tax returns to the City of Brooklyn. So they sent that letter out. Um, they received some responses. Um, the second part of this process is um, they sent out about 2,070 administrative subpoenas for the individuals that did not respond to the first letters for them to come to Brooklyn City Hall next Wednesday through Friday um, and submit their tax information to the, um, to the individuals at Rita. So there will be more updates for me to follow as part of this program and as, as we get more financial information. And also lastly, just a final reminder on our uh, general fund budget work session uh, for Monday at 6 p.m. right here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on for our agenda this evening, the first item is a notification. Um, I mentioned it in the finance report, but we did receive a $500 check from Triad Engineering and Contracting. And as several people have mentioned, this is to go for the City of Brooklyn Thanksgiving food program. So once again, thank you, Triad, for your generous support. As the, as the mayor mentioned, they do this every year, so we thank them for that. The first item that we have is a, is a conditional uh, co council confirmation for a conditional use of Starbucks at 10330 Cascade Crossing. Are there any comments or questions regarding that? Move to approve the conditional use. Second. To approve, Andy Selhertz. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Mary Bilbert. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Barb Politsky. Yes. Ryan Van Kirk. Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey. Yes. 
Ordinance 2019 40 is up for a third reading and adoption, authorizing a community cost share transfer agreement with the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District for the purchase and improvement of the property known as 10716 Bidoff Road. Are there any comments or questions? Right, make a motion to adopt. Papers. Second. To adapt, Andy Selhurst? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Grimeshackey? Yes. Ordinance 2019 41, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Quest Property Holdings LLC for the purchase of certain real property known as 11050 Memphis Avenue. And this is up for third reading adoption as well. Are there any comments or questions? May I be recognized? Yes. Um, I just want to state again for the record that I do support acquiring this property. I see the value to it. I just still think it's a little bit too high. Um, this owner did purchase it without doing his due diligence and discovering that there's no water or sewer. Um, so basically there's absolutely nothing that he can do with this property. And just to clarify, um, the appraisal that was done did not take into account the fact that there was no water or sewer. Thank you. Make a motion. May I be recognized? Yes. So we did go back to the appraisal and we did mention the fact that there was no water and sewer. Um, he stands by the appraisal amount of $48,000 despite that fact, so. May I ask a question? Sure. Um, the, why wasn't it mentioned in the appraisal? He said that it's not standard in the appraisal and he does not need to add it in order for it to be recognized and he would stand by that a value. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Make a motion that we adopt. Second. To adopt, Andy Selhurst? Yes. Kathy Pucci? No. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Ordinance 2019-43 is up for a third reading adoption, amending and updating the capital asset policy of the city of Brooklyn. Any comments or questions? Make a motion that we adopt. Second. To adapt, Andy Selhurst? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. All these next three are on first reading. Resolution 2019-7. A resolution supporting the Keep America Beautiful organization in Brooklyn and establishing a Keep Brooklyn Beautiful team. Ordinance 2019-44, amending section 351.15, truck parking prohibited exceptions and 1129.02, off-street parking and loading regulations of the codified ordinance of the city of Brooklyn. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is the ordinance that came out of our last public safety meeting. We'll be having another public safety meeting to further discuss this at the conclusion of our next council meeting. And the last one is Ordinance 2019-45, authorizing the capital improvement plan for 2020. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Does the mayor, anyone else on council, or directors, have anything else they need to add? All right, make a motion that we adjourn. Second. To adjourn, Andy Selhurst? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed evening.